Is the Dell Spectrum 1 4K monitor a true studio display killer like its CEO kind of suggests? No, but that ain't a bad thing. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Do people still care about unboxings these days? I hope not because customs absolutely ravage my Doe Spectrum 1 box. But the good news is that there's not really a lot to be seen in a Doe Spectrum 1 unboxing anyway, because it doesn't include a stand, it doesn't include any sort of cables outside of the power cable. It's a pretty simple affair. So yes, you heard right, it doesn't include a stand. To learn the reason, you kind of have to go back into the Doe or the Eve, which the company was formerly known as before they went global and then they had to change their name from Eve to Doe. Why they chose Doe? I don't know. But the long and short of it is this. Doe has a history of basing its product decisions, even during the development pay, uh, phase of its products, based on customer feedback. So it really is a customer-centric company. Customers drive a lot of the product decisions. So basically, Doe asks its customer base, hey, do you guys want us to include a stand and charge you for that stand? And 50% were like, no, we don't. We preferred if you offer the stand as a separate purchase so that we could save money on the monitor if we don't need a stand. Don't do it, Jeff, don't. I guess you could say they wanted to save some dough. But the good news is that the stand for only $99 is actually a pretty high quality. It's mostly comprised of metal. It has a little port in the back to route your cables and it allows for all sorts of tilt and rotation functionality. So the stand can tilt negative seven degrees to 23 degrees and it can raise almost five inches. Not only that, it can rotate a full 90 degrees either left or right. So if you like to play old school games, for instance, in Tate mode, or is it Tate? I don't know, but it's when you play the games vertically. Yeah, this can do that pretty well. The only thing it doesn't do is, you know, pivot like that. I wish it did that because that's kind of handy sometimes. So yeah, if you don't already own the monitor arm, I think $99 is money well spent on this stand for sure. Now, unlike the stand, the display itself is almost all plastic. It's a higher quality plastic, but sort of, sort of a soft touch material, but it's plastic nonetheless. So obviously it doesn't match the build quality of something like the studio display, which is basically all aluminum and glass. Now, the negative thing about some of these lightweight plastic monitor housings is that they are much more apt to wobble when you're typing. Now, the thing is most third-party monitors have this problem. So the Spectrum One is definitely not alone uh, with this issue, but it's just something to mention when comparing it with the studio display. But with all that being said, the Spectrum One's design with its clean lines, it is a way better looking third-party display than most third-party gaming displays out there. It doesn't scream gamer like, like this guy, for instance, that screams gamer. So I guess the takeaway from this section is that the Spectrum One is designed well, but realistically, it is in no way a studio display killer from a design perspective at all. Now, like the studio display, you can connect your Mac to the Doe Spectrum 1 with just a single cable connection. That being a USB-C cable that can deliver up to 100 watts of power to your MacBook. But just remember that that USB-C cable is not included in the box. So just keep that in mind. The nice thing is though, not only will it provide the 100 watts of power delivery, but it also gives you access to the USB hub that's built into the display. Now actually there are two USB hubs included with this display. There's one that uses a USB type C port and there's one that uses a USB type B port. And you can actually switch between those two on the fly just by flicking the little joystick on the rear of the display. So that basically means you can switch between two different sets of peripherals if you wanted to, simply by switching between each USB connection. Now, as a Mac user, you probably already appreciate what it means to have a glossy display. Outside of dealing with the obvious problem of reflections, perhaps, Glossy displays provide hands down a much better viewing experience. And that's Doe's thought behind its upgraded display featuring Gorilla Glass with DXC coating. Now, up until now with gaming monitors, you could choose any sort of finish that you wanted as long as it was matte. But with the Spectrum One, you actually have three different finish options. You get the matte option, you get glossy, and you get the new Gorilla Glass glossy option. Even the best matte options, like the highfalutin nano texture display that you can equip on the Pro Display XDR or the Studio Display pales in comparison to a glossy display. So that matte coating basically works like a layer of diffusion. So 
it almost appears like you have an anti-aliasing filter on top of your display. So you get less sharp edges. So things like text isn't gonna be as sharp as it is on a glossy display. It also lessens the contrast ratio. It makes colors appear a little bit more washed out. It's just not as nice to look at. Granted, you have way less reflections, but if you can manage the reflections in your environment, I would choose Glossy 10 times out of 10. Now, I've never used the original Glossy Spectrum 1, so I haven't compared them, but from what I understand, the differences are fairly subtle. The new glass coating is edge to edge. It is better equipped to reject reflections, features better bonding, and includes a more robust anti-abrasion cover in case you should knock something into the display. Now, since I haven't compared the two, I can't say if it's $200 better than the original glossy version, but what I will say is this. No matter which one you pick, it's a gaming display with a glossy screen. That in and of itself is very exciting for obvious reasons that we just mentioned. The Spectrum One is a 27 inch 4K UHD display, 3840 by 2160 native resolution. Now, 4K is obviously a step above the 1440p QHD monitors that many gamers are familiar with, they might be upgrading from, but it is a noticeable step down from the 5K 5120 by 2880 native resolution display that the studio display is. Now, if you're running in so-called Retina pixel doubled mode, that means that the Spectrum One provides a usable 1920 by 1080 resolution versus the studio displays 2560 by 1440 resolution in that so-called retina mode. But despite the resolution differences, obviously it's a gaming centric display. So if you're gaming, listen up. The Spectrum One is a 144 Hertz panel versus the studio display 60 Hertz panel. So that alone, if you're gaming, is gonna make the Spectrum One more appealing. And even if you're not gaming, listen up, because the Spectrum One combines nicely with the MacBook Pro's ProMotion display, which can run at a max resolution of 120 hertz. Therefore, the Spectrum One produces a nicer image when scrolling through text compared to the studio display. So if you want an experience on your external display that's more similar to the MacBook Pro in terms of refresh rate, then the Spectrum One is the obvious option there. The Spectrum One also features a super fast one millisecond response time, which is something generally not associated with an IPS panel. So outside of the differences in refresh rate and response time, the multiple port options on the Spectrum One is a huge difference between it and the studio display. With the Spectrum One, you get two HDMI 2.1 inputs. You get a single DisplayPort 1.4 input. You get the USB type C input, which features DisplayPort 1.4, and then you get an extra USB type C, that USB type B that we talked about, two USB type A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So the Spectrum One's obviously way better for connecting multiple devices. You can connect not just your Mac, but gaming consoles, set top boxes, your PCs, and more. You can even display two sources simultaneously via the display split screen mode, so you can use your Mac and game at the same time if you wanna do that. This is an area where Apple's IO limited studio display simply cannot compete whatsoever. The Spectrum One has a couple of features that will make the experience with old school games even better. First, it features pixel perfect integer ratio scaling, which basically means when you scale a pixel based game up to 4K, it maintains its pixelation. It doesn't get all blurry and weird looking. And the Spectrum One also features 60 Hertz single strobe mode, which provides a CRT like clarity in exchange for some flicker. So if you prefer the way your old school games appeared on the CRT without that blur effect that you often see on today's modern displays, then you're definitely going to appreciate that single strobe option. Now let's talk shortcomings. One of the biggest, obviously, having that 5K display within a same 27 inch footprint is gonna give the studio display not only more real estate, but better pixel density. So that is obviously a win for Apple's display. The studio display also is brighter in typical usage. You get 450 nits on the Spectrum One versus 600 nits on the studio display. Granted, the Spectrum One does have higher peak brightness. It can get up to 750 nits when running in HDR mode. And it also has 16 local dimming zones, which is gonna help HDR help contrast. But compare that to the over 2000 dimming zones within the 14 inch MacBook Pro, and it looks a little paltry. 
Granted, we're comparing the Studio Display versus the Spectrum One. The Studio Display also features a few other advantages as well, like that six speaker sound system, which sounds pretty decent uh, for what it is. You also get a three mic array with beam forming, which is gonna be great for video conferencing. And speaking of video conferencing, you get a built-in webcam. It's not the greatest webcam, but you get that 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with center stage support in tow. No one's gonna think you're using a Sony FX3, but it's nice to have it built in, right? You don't get any of those with the Spectrum One. You do get that 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack with a DAC that can power speakers or it can power a pair of headphones, but that's about it. The Doe Spectrum One, it is no studio display killer, but it doesn't have to be. The Spectrum One stands on its own as a solid option for any Mac user looking for a suitable gaming focused display that has design that isn't ostentatious or just embarrassing. It also happens to be pretty decent as just a regular Mac display thanks to that refresh rate that can match the ProMotion display refresh rate found on the MacBook Pro. Not only does it feature a bevy of input options for all of your favorite gaming consoles and set-top boxes, but it also features that higher refresh rate, the lower input lag, and a variety of other gaming-centric features. But it also features a glossy display, which looks amazing compared to a matte display when it comes to things like contrast ratio and sharpness. Yes, it lacks many of the all-in-one options found on Apple's 5K display, but chances are if you're a gamer, you already own a nice webcam, you already own a nice set of speakers and a microphone. Now, it wouldn't be right for me to complete this review without at least touching on some of the issues that Eve, which is the company now known as Doe, has experienced in the past with customer relations. Just search Google, you'll find it. Complaints from various customers about not receiving their products or not receiving refunds funds and things like that. But given the broader distribution that Doe is now tapping into, B&H being one of their distributors, hopefully that will eliminate or at least drastically lessen some of the issues the company has had with customer relations in the past. So folks, here's my verdict. If I was in the market for a display that needed to double as both a productivity display and a gaming display, this would probably be the one I would opt for. But that being said, I'm not a huge gamer, so I will probably be sticking with the studio display for now, but I will miss that refresh rate for sure. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.